today I want to talk about living in Linwood and I actually myself have lived in Linwood for about 10 years and I've just moved five miles down the road now I'm in the shoreline area but Linwood is fantastic and there are a lot of fun things to do here although it doesn't have the traditional downtown it does have a lot to offer so today we're going to visit some of the high points of the Linwood neighborhood. Welcome to Linwood, Washington. So Linwood is one of my favorite places in the Puget Sound area and I actually lived there for 10 years. That's where I got my first home when I came back here after college. So if you are thinking about moving to the Linwood area, if you already know you want to live there and you just want to see what it's like, or if you're kind of weighing your options, looking at the pros and cons of different Seattle neighborhoods, Bellevue, Everett, you may be even down into Tacoma. You are in the right place. We are gonna go over all things Linwood from my own personal experience, from my experience as a real estate agent, and also as um, a sort of a statistician, I will bring in some data from outside sources so you can get the real scoop. But the fun part of this video is that I actually went out on the town and filmed some video on, like, on location in Linwood. And so I'm gonna be incorporating those clips so that it's not just me sitting here at my desk talking to you. I will be uh, taking you out into the field in Linwood. So make sure you subscribe. I do try to make new videos every week. So if you are thinking again about moving to the Seattle area and just need to boil things down, kind of compare and contrast some different locations, that is the goal of this channel. We're doing 10 to 20 minute videos highlighting different neighborhoods and I wanna make sure that we have the content able to reach you when it does come out. Also look through our past library. Uh, you can see what else we've published. If you have a location that you're interested in, be sure to let me know in the comments so that we can uh, get out the information, you know, kind of what, what, I don't know what people here outside of Washington or the trendy areas might be, but um, I know what I think. I have very clear opinions and I'm gonna be presenting those here. No, I am a real estate broker. If you need help buying or renting here or kind of getting situated, if you are already in the area and you don't really know where to go next to buy your next house, uh, we can we can help put you on the path. So uh, we'd be happy to help. If you have any questions, again, put them in the comments or you can message me directly. All right. So with no further ado, let's dive into Linwood, Washington. So I have to say, growing up in the Seattle area, I grew up a little bit south of Linwood, near the shoreline, Lake Forest Park area, just uh, at the, t the north end of the lake. And I always felt that Linwood was really like out in the boonies. I think, you know, if Seattle is kind of the, the core, all roads lead to Seattle, then however far you're out, you think things close to Seattle are close and things outside of Seattle are far away. So growing up, that was my opinion. You could go, you know, 15 minutes south and get into Northgate Mall, which was the big mall in the area. And that seemed to be the right mall to go to. And going all the way out to Linwood, that was like the boonies. And so we rarely went out to Alderwood Mall. And I would say, interestingly, I feel like that position has kind of shifted now. I still live in almost exactly the same place that I grew up. But now my preference is definitely going up to Linwood. Alderwood Mall has had a lot of money put into it. It's a very nice facility, whereas Northgate and the city of Seattle as a whole has become a less attractive destination for things like shopping and restaurants, uh, just because some of their city policies have changed the, the scope or the feel of the city, in my opinion. So uh, with all the kind of work from home transitions that we've seen over the past year, we're seeing a lot of population repositioning away from the core of Seattle and into a lot of the suburbs. The suburbs like Linwood and Bothell here in the North End have been growing much more quickly than the core of the city. We've seen a, a softer real estate market, downtown condos, for example. Everyone wants more space and they're less worried about the commute. So uh, they're going outside of the city and then it just becomes where you can find the type of house that you'd like to live in but that you can also afford. So we'll go into some housing options later on in this video. So what Linwood offers is um, a very retail restaurant and, and shopping intensive area. 
It has um, a major road. It's called Highway 99 Aurora. It's a north-south freeway that parallels I-5. I'm sorry, I-5 is the freeway and Aurora is a north-south highway with lots of stoplights that parallels it. And this is our main business corridor throughout. It goes through Shoreline up into the Linwood area full of uh, stores, restaurants, buses go up and down this road. It's a, it's kind of the alternative north-south route for when I-5 freeway gets too backed up. And it's also where a lot of the, the shopping is. So in addition to that big street, we have Alderwood Mall, which has become a very popular mall. We'll go visit Alderwood Mall. And I'll show you what that's like here in a minute. But uh, Canadians actually come south from the border to visit this area. So I want to show you now a little clip of Alderwood Mall and what that's like as a destination. Here we are at Alderwood Mall in Linwood, and if you are living in Linwood or thinking of moving to Linwood, this destination should definitely be on your list of places to visit. This is a fabulous mall that's been here for decades, but was recently remodeled and turned into an outdoor mall. So not only do they have the traditional stores inside the building, which are great for mall walkers on some of our cloudy days in the winter, but they've developed several courtyards and plazas and outdoor shopping so that in the summer this really becomes a destination. The, the water fountains are great, very cooling. You can sit and chat. You can grab an ice cream cone. You can head to the movie theater. There is a lot to do and see here. And in fact, I used to live in Linwood. I lived here for about 10 years, including the period of time when my children were born. And when my in-laws came to visit us, they stayed at a hotel in the area. There are a lot of hotels here. And the question was, why was it so crowded? It was just kind of a random week. It wasn't spring break or anything like that. And they said their hotel was filled with shoppers who had ridden a bus down from Canada and came to Linwood with the specific destination in mind of coming here to shop. And in fact, uh, what I learned at that point was that this is the first Nordstrom south of the Canadian border. And of course, the mall has a number of wonderful other stores as well. I always came here as a kid to do Christmas shopping and still come back to make sure that we get to see all of the, the decorations, find a few wonderful gifts, and buy frangos as well when they are available. So right across the street, they are, they've built the Costco, and this is another new thing. When I say everything is new in Linwood, I moved out of here about five years ago, and so many things have changed in that time. So the Costco opening was one of them. Now about 10, 15 minutes south of here in Shoreline is another Costco, and that's one of the most popular Costco locations in the entire state of Washington. So I guess they thought they would build on their success, and they've put in another great Costco here as well. Now, not all of the stores are thriving, and it's certainly been a difficult period for retail, but what they've done in this area is to actually remove one of the stores that wasn't doing well. It was a big Sears box store, and now they're building apartments here. And so they have a huge high-rise apartment complex going in. And we're seeing that same type of thing all over Linwood because as you probably have heard, the light rail is coming in. They're turning what used to be a bus station park and ride right off of the I-5 freeway and they're expanding it to be a stop for the light rail train that goes all the way into downtown Seattle and down to uh, SeaTac Airport as well. Eventually, they hope to build that up to Everett but it's not there yet. Right now, we're just coming to Linwood and everyone's very excited about it. So when I'm showing real estate, it's just amazing to see how homes have blown up. The prices are going very high. We're seeing multiple offers. So this area just seems to be a very exciting place for people to live. As a family location, it's wonderful too. I'll do a couple other videos and you can learn what some of the highlights are of living in Linwood, but for now, Remember to visit Alderwood Mall. It's a fantastic place to go. And even if you don't plan on spending any money, you can still spend a couple hours walking around, enjoying the sights and sounds and people watching.
So before we get too deep into the video, let's just talk about the climate of Alderwood, or I'm sorry, of Linwood and what that's like, uh, what you can expect to find there. So first of all, where is it located? Linwood is about halfway between the, down, the city of Seattle and Everett. So Seattle is to the south, Everett is to the north, and then if you go a little bit southeast along Lake Washington, you'll get into Bellevue as well. So Linwood really has an ideal location kind of at the crossroads of these uh, commuter destinations that you can have, uh, you know, a multi-adult household, different spouses could commute it to different cities and everyone could have a reasonable drive and it would be a, a very convenient location to live in. So when we bought our, our townhouse there, it was our first home. We didn't know where my husband would be working. He was, uh, working at an IT job in North Carolina. So when we came here, he was able to stay on as a contractor temporarily. We knew that wouldn't last forever. So when he would need to get another permanent job, we didn't know where it would be. So we wanted to have a flexible location. And he ultimately ended up getting a job in downtown Seattle and was able to commute there, I would say about an hour door to door. It was actually a very convenient location. He could put her down the street in our, our old beater car that we had at the time, park in the park and ride, and then get on an express bus that would pop onto the freeway, take the fast lanes of traffic that you can only take if you're a carpool or a bus, and get to downtown with pretty much no stops outside of Linwood, just drive directly downtown, and he could pop out and then walk a couple blocks to work. So if you are going to the downtown high rise area for work, Linwood is actually a very convenient location to do that. Just look for the, the nearby park and rides. And same thing with Bellevue, excellent bus service. So Linwood has about eight square miles in this kind of prime location in the middle of everything. And I actually, I, I chuckled on the bus one time going by, I saw an ad for Linwood that said, Linwood, 20 minutes from everywhere. And well, true, I felt like it was humorous because to me, it made me think that you didn't actually want to be in Linwood. You just wanted to be somewhere else that was 20 minutes away. So I think I think their motto could improve a little bit, but yes, from a location standpoint, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so eight square miles, uh, kind of pretty close to the middle between Everett and Seattle. And uh, the population is 38,000 as of a couple years ago. And this is growing, uh, this data is from 2019. So at that time it was growing 1% a year. I would not be surprised. I don't have more recent data here, but in the last year, I think it would have been growing more than that because like I said, the work from home kind of change in that regard. And also the city of Seattle is bringing a light rail track up. So the light rail is a new public transportation option. It goes all the way from the airport at SeaTac up through the city of Seattle, up to the University of Washington. And now it's coming up to Linwood. Uh, they're making good progress on that. And ultimately the next phase, they will be building it out to Everett as well. So that will again, improve commuter options. And so that's created some excitement for developers in particular building apartment buildings around that area and then out from the apartment buildings, townhomes, and then new new housing as well. So if we wanna look at the cost of new construction in the Linwood area, it's gotten fairly expensive. So new construction townhomes are starting at around 650 to 700,000. Mostly that would be a, a three bedroom price point. And again, in a townhome, you will have a homeowners association that you need to pay into every month so uh, just keep that in mind when you're budgeting and you're talking to your mortgage broker. As far as standalone freestanding houses, new construction is running, uh, starting at about 900,000. So we're getting close to a million dollars for a new standalone new construction property in Linwood. There are certainly older homes that are less than that, maybe half that much, but uh, for new construction, that's what we're looking at. And also bear in mind that the new construction is, is very much oriented toward high density housing. So you're gonna get a large house on a small footprint of land. Developers are explicitly discouraged 
from doing large homes. They can't have a big acreage. They're, they're being pushed toward high density housing. And this is the case all along the I-5 corridor. So if having a large yard is something that's important to you, you're gonna wanna look at used property, you know, as they call it, homes that were built years ago when uh, more land was available and it was less expensive. Now you'll just have to compete against the developers who might see a small house with a big piece of land and think that's an op opportunity to tear down the house and build something else. So that's kind of the way the city has been developing. Um, as far as if you want to, if you want to live in Seattle, I'm sorry, if you want to live in Linwood, uh, zip codes to search for would be 98037, 98087, 98036, and 98046. So those would be the right zip codes to take a look at. And bear in mind, the, the average age in the Linwood area is 43. They're about 40, I guess. I've seen some down to 33. I've seen that my mid, but they're in that kind of middle, middle age bracket. It's largely, uh, you know, I guess I can't say too much actually uh, as a real estate agent, I cannot say too much. So I'm just citing census data here. The, the last census data that we have says that the average age is 40, but everybody is welcome. And no matter what age you are, you are welcome to live in Linwood. Uh, we're, <coughs> we're not supposed to steer or direct anybody based on age, race, uh, creed, family status, anything like that. So I can't, I can't say more than that. Um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to point out was just the workforce is largely, this is largely a bedroom community for Seattle and Everett and to some extent Bellevue as well. Uh, I will point out Bellevue is um, on the ascendancy as far as a, a downtown workplace goes. They compared comparing Seattle and Bellevue. Bellevue has done a better job of keeping their taxes and city policies business friendly. And also they have uh, policies that seem to reinforce uh, less homelessness there. So in terms of homelessness, trash, drug use and things like that, that you might observe out in the open that will be more apparent in Seattle and less apparent in Bellevue. So uh, they've written newspapers about this, this trend. And so for the, for the most part, a comparable property in Bellevue will be more expensive than the similar property in Seattle. So that three bedroom, two bath house built in 1950s will be maybe 20% more expensive in Bellevue. So for affordability, many people are not able to live on the Bellevue side. So we have the option of living in Seattle and trying to get across one of the bridges, 520 or I-90 over to Bellevue, or you can live at the north or south end of the lake and come into Bellevue on the 405 freeway, or you can choose to live east of Bellevue. You can't go too far east because we have the Cascade Mountains there as a natural barrier. There are um, national parklands and protected forest areas that you're not allowed to build in. So currently, uh, east of Bellevue, we have Lake Sammamish, which is kind of a more expensive area. And then we have Issaquah, which is definitely an up and coming area. There's a lot of new construction there. And Issaquah has gotten very popular uh, for new construction, families relocating to the area, a lot of folks like Issaquah. So we'll have to do another video on Issaquah for you to take a look at, but um, it's close to the mountains. So if you like to ski and get into the snow, it's a great location for that. And then it, you can also get into Bellevue. It's a little farther away from downtown Seattle. So anyway, Linwood, again, like I said, is a great location for Seattle, Bellevue, and Everett commutes. And so for that reason, <laughs> where was I going with this? For that reason, um, only about 12% of the people, the workforce living in Linwood actually stay in Linwood to work. 12% of the Linwood workforce works in Linwood. Uh, the other folks that live there, about 30% go down into Seattle for work. That's, that's about half the population. And then the other folks kind of disperse. Some go uh, up into Everett, some go over to the beach in Edmonds, some go uh, downtown Bellevue, and of course they could go other places as well. So uh, just so you know, 
Linwood does not, I think it has one or two high rise office buildings that are maybe five or 10 stories tall, something like that. But there's not really a downtown in terms of skyscrapers. There's more of a business district in terms of lots of restaurants. It's in North Carolina, we joked one of the places that we lived was kind of like a, a truck stop. You know, you get off that exit on the freeway and there are all your favorite restaurants, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Jack in the Box. Chipotle, my personal favorite, Panda Express, Red Lobster, Olive Garden, uh, Kona Kitchen, all sorts of different places that you can go to eat. And that's kind of the pl the the way that uh, that's kind of the way that Linwood is with lots of different restaurants and businesses built in um, and several areas that are like that. So let me show you one of the little shopping centers here. You can kind of get an idea of what the new shopping areas just along Aurora look like in Linwood. Hey guys, so we're here at Linwood Crossroads and we're actually, this is a hopping corner of Linwood. Let me tell you, right over here, we've got James Village, which has uh, the half price books where I always go to get things for my family for Christmas. Shh. And the, also the Hobby Lobby, which is huge and has been really popular ever since they built it. Uh, over here at this side, it's um, it's more, I would say, they're going for a high-end feel. And even though it's a shopping center, they've got most of their stores along the street, along Aurora Avenue. So it's easily accessible by walkers and folks who are coming through to um, uh, getting off the bus and that type of thing. So now I want to skip over and show you a couple other places that I really like in Linwood. One is the rec center where the pool is. There are lots of uh, lessons that you, the kids can take there or some for adults as well. And then uh, Veterans Park, which I think is a really nice place. I lived in Linwood for 10 years and this place was one of my all time favorites. I had young children and we are here at the Linwood Rec Center and this was like our home away from home. So when they built this they did a fantastic job they have a swimming pool in the back that has all the features of any modern pool you could ask for a lazy river a lap pool a kid's beach area with the big bucket that dumps everything and the jungle gym that they kind of climb on as well as two water slides that actually go outside of the building so it's a completely indoor pool this is still the seattle area it's not warm enough in the summer to really make good use of the pool. This one is open year round. And let me tell you, when they open the doors, they have lines packed around the block to get in here. So oftentimes on spring break or other times that um, the kids are free and my husband is available, this is the destination that they come to. But inside this facility, they have lots of things to do besides swimming. They have uh, lots of classrooms. My son actually attended preschool here for a year which he really enjoyed. And my daughter took those little baby ballet classes where they just are all about dressing up in the tutu and the, the fluffy, <laughs> the gauze skirts bounce around everywhere, but they don't actually uh, do hardcore ballet. Uh, I think they also have some martial arts classes and I've seen a really nice gym with modern equipment that a lot of folks take advantage of as well. So if you're living in the Linwood area and you wanna know kind of what the community things are to do, this is one of them here at the rec center. Another of my favorite locations is the Linwood Library, which is just the block down. So if you live in this area, it's very walkable and a lot of the camps in the summer take advantage of these facilities. Linwood is a really wonderful place. It doesn't have that central downtown hub uh, there are a couple of tall high-rise buildings, but there's not really a, um, a walkable urban core. This is kind of it. It feels very suburban and there's still plenty to do here. It's just more of a sprawling, spread out type of feel. So we'll show you another couple fun things to do here in Linwood. But if you like to swim, no matter where you are in the North Seattle area, this pool is worth coming to. It's a lot of fun. And if you can get a ticket and get in, you'll really enjoy yourself. So here we are in Veterans Memorial Plaza, and this is a part of Linwood that I really enjoy coming to on Veterans Day in November. Now, typically it's pretty cold and rainy, but they've got this plaza lined with folding chairs and uh, the VFW always hosts a nice event here. They have 
uh, veterans come, they have speakers, uh, musicians, and often the Northwest Junior Piper Band comes and plays the bagpipes, which is a favorite of mine. Occasionally they will also do uh, like a 21 gun salute. They'll have someone playing taps. So if you're feeling patriotic and you want to bring your family out to an event that really commemorates what's going on and why we're having this day off from work and school, then coming out here to a public event and a gathering like this in Linwood is a really nice way to open up those conversations and build that appreciation throughout the next generation of what some of the sacrifices have been uh, from the, the warriors who have come before us. Now, this is actually in the parking lot of the Linwood Library. So we're very close to the, the library, the rec center. We've got the police station and justice, what's it called? Linwood Civic Justice Center right across the street as well as some law firms. And then we're just by uh, the QFC and lots of other shopping here. So we're certainly in kind of a central area of Linwood, but it's a nice little haven, a nice little getaway, a wonderful place to enjoy spending some time outside and uh, thinking about the, uh, the men and women who have served this country in the past. So these were kind of my stomping grounds when I lived in Linwood, and I think that they are uh, very charming. They're not fancy, they're not exclusive. And in fact, near the Linwood Library, there do tend to be a fair number of homeless people who like to come in and use the computers and have a, a safe, warm place or a cool place in the summer. So that can be an area that's fairly attractive. And there are homeless people in Linwood, but it's certainly not to the extent uh, in, as in Seattle. And I have never felt unsafe there, even when I was going around with um, my young kids at the time. So, so the poverty rate in Linwood is 14% and the median income there is 64,000. So this has been historically uh, a more affordable place to live, but like I said, it's been shooting up in the last couple of years and particularly the last 12 months. I know that I had clients that were looking for a home in this area, they looked for seven months and it was almost like every month we would see the prices, you know, that home that they could have bought for 625,000 now costs 725,000 toward the end of our experience. So historically uh, it has not grown that much, but in the last 12 months as of this shooting, it's been growing at about 1% a month um, after taking a big jump. <laughs> um, the median income is not quite keeping track with that last records show the median income growing 7% a year. Now the history of Linwood is, uh, a, it was a logging area like must, much of Western Washington and you can still go through various different forested parks and things and sometimes see the trees that have been chopped down. Yost Park, which is in Edmonds, which is an adjacent city, right? It all blends together. But if you go to Yost Park in Edmonds, they actually have highlighted a couple trees that have especially large stumps and you can just see the enormous circumference of these trees that were growing there and were cut down and even sometimes they have little axe cuts where they um, would go in so they could stand on a platform and get up high enough to saw it down and just some interesting history things and it's always fun to know where the town came from. Linwood in particular seems to have primarily come on the radar as a township around the 1940s when they were excavating for the road that has now become Highway 99 and also the Interurban Railroad was coming through this area. It got its name from a real estate agent's wife named Lynn and I guess they probably had their own woodsy lot there so they named it Linwood and uh, others who came to the area knew it by that name. Okay, now let's talk about schools. A lot of families who are looking to come to the Seattle area and are looking at Linwood have the, the big question, the big burning question, what are the schools like here? And it's important in two ways. Number one, everybody wants to have excellent schools, but number two, the problem with having excellent schools is that it drives the prices up higher. So I noticed uh, looking between Linwood and Bothell. Bothell is the similar township to the east of Linwood. Bothell has better schools and higher prices, more competition to buy a similar home. 
So if your kids are younger or not born yet, or they're older and they're leaving school, or if they go to a private school and you're not worried about the public schools, you will get a better deal on your house in Linwood. But um, finding that great house in a great school district you know, they're not bad, they're just not as good as some of the other schools in surrounding areas. So let's take a look. For elementary schools in Linwood, we actually have a range of options. Uh, some of the schools, I'm looking here at greatschools.org. So we have elementary schools rated from between five and nine, but a lot of them are in the six to seven range, which again, is not bad. The best elementary schools in Linwood based on the greatschools.org rating are Shelton, Endeavor, and Lockwood. Shelton, Endeavor, and Lockwood, and those are eights and nines. Okay, many middle schools in this area are not that good either. <laughs> um, they get about a five, so I shouldn't say they're not that good. They're average, and so that's fine, right? Um, the best rated school is the Maplewood Parent Cooperative, which is a K through eight, and that's rated an eight. But as a parent cooperative, it's kind of got a, a bit of an alternative school vibe and, and parents would need to be involved with that. And then for high schools, we're getting sixes and sevens. And the best one is Mount Lake Terrace High School. And so here's a little map. I'll just show you kind of a screenshot. You can get an idea of where the schools are and what they're rated. And for more information, you can check out bestschools.org. I'm sorry, greatschools.org. As far as private schools, actually one of the private schools that I was considering for my kids when uh, everything started going crazy was Soundview School. So that's right in Linwood and that's uh, a convenient location. There's also St. Thomas More Parish School and Cedar Park Christian School, which is known for having great school and great staff there. Okay, so let's dive in and talk a little bit about the condos, I'm sorry, the prices for homes in this area. We talked earlier about new construction. We were saying uh, new construction condos were 650 to 700 and up. And then new construction freestanding was around 900,000. But don't worry because not everything is new construction and you can certainly get a good deal on something that's a used house, right? There's no there's no stigma with having a used house. It's not that a new, a new house is necessarily better. In fact, what I often find myself telling people is that the best locations were built first. So if you have something that's new construction, it may not be in the best location or it might've had to tear something else down. And so it was cheap house, cheap land with maybe less expensive homes nearby. So oftentimes you can find nice homes in nice areas if we look into the used property department and uh, depending on how well they've been taken care of and maintained, they can be actually relatively inexpensive to move forward with. You know, not everything is a fixer upper. I, as an investor, do keep an eye out for fixer uppers, but most people who are buying a home use all their cash to buy the home and do not want to then live in the middle of a construction project that where they're remodeling everything. The cheapest home you can buy. <laughs> Let's start on that end of the spectrum. So for about $200,000, you can buy like a one bedroom condo. So that's going to be the cheap end of things. And if you can spend about $500,000, you should be able to get yourself into a three bedroom, two bath townhome type of situation. So just as a reference point, those are kind of that's the cheapest is 200,000 for a one bedroom and for a three bedroom, it's going to be around half a million, something like that. Uh, a three bedroom house, a standalone house might start for about half a million and of course go up over 1 million. You can always charge higher, but this is not really thought of as a luxury area. It's just, there are the potential here for new construction, large square footage homes and also newer, older homes on bigger lots would certainly be more expensive as well. I'd say the median, the average kind of price range of what you would think of would be a three bedroom home for your family, uh, 
that looks like a normal house, right? I have some examples up here that are just currently available. They probably won't be available when you watch this, but you can see, you know, here's a split level for 750. I guess that's a tri-level. Um, here's a bigger home, four bedroom, 2000 square feet for 750 um, and some other homes. These are all around 750, which is currently the median price point. So that can just give you an idea of what your median priced home is gonna look like in Livewood. Okay, so now let's talk about sort of fun things to do, the culture, what events you're going to experience when you live in the Linwood area. And I will say one complaint that I've heard leveled against Linwood is that there's not a lot of, there's not a big sense of community here. Uh, like I said before, it's kind of a commuter town. There aren't a lot of, um, sidewalks or walkable areas the parks tend to be small there just isn't that much hanging out togetherness in Linwood for those types of events I personally would often travel to Edmonds or Everett or into Seattle or Shoreline where the city sponsors more events um, I just don't see a lot of that in Linwood although in recent years I think you know pre-2019 I think they were trying to do that a little bit more and so maybe that's something that will continue to evolve. Um, I know the one guy, the mayor, he he's running for mayor of Linwood and he was also starting a Linwood Chamber of Commerce and trying to do things to build community in the Linwood area. So we'll see how that evolves, but I would say that's not a strength of this area. If you wanted some kind of hub or core of that type of thing, I would look to the rec center the library and the city, the senior center, all of those are kind of together, the fire department all together in one block of Linwood. And so a lot of the types of organized events would be coming out of that area on, on 44th Avenue West. So uh, what is there to do? Number one, shop till you drop. There's Alderwood Mall and they have done, like you saw before, a lot of renovations in this area. So it used to be the old fashioned indoor mall and so all around the outside of it, they've added on shops and outdoor mall experiences, fountains, statues, sitting areas, ice cream shops, restaurants, that type of a thing. So it has a great movie theater. They've tried to make it into more of a destination or a hangout spot where you can come and stay all day. And then in addition to the Alderwood Mall property itself, that has attracted lots of businesses around the periphery. So, you know, Red Robins across the street, um, they used to have Toys R Us, which is gone now. Oh, it's so sad. There's a Nordstrom Rack. There's Barnes & Noble. Those types of other stores that aren't in the mall, but are around the mall. So lots of shopping, lots of restaurants. Again, that's the theme of Linwood. Uh, in addition, like I mentioned before, the Linwood Rec Center, which has the pool, the exercise room, the kind of dance room, studios, martial arts, flexible uh, lesson spaces. And then um, that's also where they do a lot of the summer camps, the city sponsored, you know, schools out, let's do the, the public summer camp that's available there as well. Uh, adjacent public library. This was my, my saving grace when I was a stay at home mom. Uh, my kids would be, you know, circling in the living room, jumping on the couch, uh, it would be rainy. I didn't feel like going to the park. Uh, so what would we do? At 10 o'clock in the morning, and they actually had two different sessions, once or twice a week, the library would have a child reading time. So we could come into the library, they'd read a story, we'd sing songs, so we'd meet other moms, have a social opportunity, and then disperse into the library to um, spend time with the books, check out something to bring home. It was right across the street from the Fred Meyer, I could do my grocery shopping as well. It was just a nice, uh, a uh, thing to hold on to as a mom by myself <laughs> going crazy at home. So the I, I highly recommend the Linwood Library and they'll give your kids a library card and they don't charge late fees, which was also really good for me at the time. So check out the Linwood Library. Um, they have free printing there, uh, website stuff, tutoring, a lot of different nice things are happening at the, the library. Uh, there are a couple of parks. Scriber Lake Park is a good one. I kind of call it Swamp Park. It's 
it's an interesting sort of marshy experience. There's a lake in the middle and then there's like a squishy mud path and they have wood chips on it and stuff, but the, you don't get too wet. You can go actually with a stroller if you want to, but you'll see uh, people fishing. There's a little bridge that goes out over part of the water. You can see ducks, sometimes blue herons, a lot of reeds and things. So it's, it's a nice escape. And then across from the street from that, I call it flagpole park. <laughs> there are like 20 flagpoles and um, a big field. There's a basketball court. There's a, a kid's playground and that type of thing. So get out to the parks. There are other parks too, but those were a couple that, that we liked. And then there's the Linwood Convention Center, which I actually have not spent a lot of time in, but sometimes they would have, you know, you could enter and they would have different kinds of art displayed on the walls, or they could have um, conventions and business things there when Linwood had, you know, an anniversary birthday, they held it there. Uh, so back when big meetings were cool, you could have them at the Linwood Convention Center. Although I personally, as a resident, was not actively taking part in that. And that's actually in another kind of single level shopping center with the post office and the gym and Chuck E. Cheese and the place I had to get fingerprinted for my real estate license, those types of things. And then, um, what else is there? Fantastic Playtorium. There's uh, little gyms for the, the kids to go to, toddler gyms and that type of a thing. Uh, Meadowdale Park, which is a beautiful park that you can actually hike down, um, kind of down a bluff, but you go through the woods. There are a lot of parks like this in the area where you have to go down a hill and get to the water, but it's nice to be able to experience the woods and then experience the sound and uh, you know, find new new kinds of scenery, enjoy it at different seasons, go running or jogging, uh, hill climbing, bring your dog, uh, lots of fitness opportunities. So I think, I think uh, there are a number of different things to do, lots of restaurants, there are game shops, you know, you could gather and do board games or you could do karate lessons, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to buy or spend your money on is gonna be available pretty easily in Linwood, it's definitely um, a busy place and a lot of fun, but not as much community oriented. I would just, you know, have a car, plan to go where you want to go. Um, actually, we have a an email newsletter that you're welcome to get onto. It's called Let's Go Seattle, and so every week I email what the events are that are going on in the area, and it doesn't matter if it's in Seattle or Linwood or Bellevue or what, like it's all pretty close. So we just try to hit the highlights of different fun things that are doing. So feel free to check that out if you want. So make sure you check out the next video again as you're researching different areas to move to. And please consider Linwood as a wonderful place to live. Again, I lived there for 10 years. So if you had any questions, paste your comments below. And if you live there and you think I'm wrong or you wanna share your opinion of what Linwood is like, please post that in the comments too. I would love to kind of communally source this so we get lots of different perspectives on here and I look forward to hearing what it is that you have to say. Thanks so much for joining me. It's Emily Cressy with Home Smart Real Estate and I'll see you on the next video.